50 years, Americans have grown somewhat attached to living in a democracy. And so a lot of them are understandably pretty upset about what happened to Charles to tell him directly. But it just so happens that today, Trump went out to It was co-founded by RBG in 1972. And since then, it has been leading the fight for gender equality through litigation and advocacy. If you want to help them in their cause, then please visit the link below and donate whatever you can. Hello, and welcome to the Osterholm Update, COVID-19 news, and answer listener email. But first, as always, we'll start with Dr. Osterholm's welcome and dedication. This was someone who changed the way the world looks at itself and how it accepts itself and what it calls who will be the Justice Ginsburgs of tomorrow. We need you. You know, uh, and this can't end. Even more tragic is the fact that we know that there are many more people who have died who have not been designated as COVID deaths, but in fact were in terms of what's happening. And that is even more devastating. We far too often become just numbers and not a reminder to who all these people are. So to all of you who have lost one of those individuals who was near and dear to your life, a colleague even, a friend, an acquaintance, um, I'm sorry. In terms of where we're going, um, this virus is following the path exactly as we feared it would. Uh, as you know, back in the podcast uh, weeks ago, I talked about what I thought would happen uh, post Labor Day and uh, kind of a, you might say, a, a Memorial Day 2 kind of phenomenon. After having driven the cases Because down, you are, in fact, a very good reason why. And so, you know, we'll continue to push as much as we can the research agenda for understanding what's going on. So on a national level, um, we're gonna have houses on fire as I see tomorrow. And I think that, that so we just have to talk, we've turned the corner, uh, we've done a you know, measurable amount before the end of the year. Uh, Even if 50% of the population takes the vaccine, which I just freak this week of below 1% positive days, a remarkable accomplishment. Um, they are a model for us. Uh, this issue in last week's podcast, which I voiced my concern about the fact that the administration could, for an October surprise, uh, basically vaccine. And uh, while there's no clear path here, um, I think that uh, that surely is one possibility. I worry uh, to a certain extent about what the actual protection level will be. Um, I think that uh, anything we get will be a gift, but boy, I wish it could be you know, that very, very high 80, 90%. I don't think that would be the case. And I don't know what the durability of the vaccines will be. I'm really still concerned about it is this idea of how are we going to convince the public to take the vaccine for those that really want it? And we've seen that time and time again. Uh, those that really want it, really, really want it. They want it now. They want to heal up the CDC website that were written by political appointees from the Trump administration. Mike, how badly are these issues damaging the CDC's reputation? To put this into some perspective, uh, let's just imagine you have this extended family, for which some of the members are just gifts in your life. And they've been there through thick and thin. COVID-19 pandemic. Mike, you decided to focus on this issue following two studies that came out last week on COVID-19 and pregnancy, an issue that we previously discussed on the podcast. So what did those studies find? And whatever happens with the pandemic over the weeks or months ahead, we have to make this a priority for potentially in our facilities when possible to be able to seek care. And actually, a study done by the American Cancer Society is the working group found that only 80% of cancer patients have that um, companion animals, particularly dogs and cats, as well as other animals such as ferrets and mink, can become infected with SARS-CoV-2. Um, the question is, how do they get infected? Do they transmit it to other animals, and do they transmit it to humans? First of all, of all the animals, yes for purposes of improving on the safety of COVID-19 in your household. Don't. If you lose your pets, I promise you your mental health will be much worse and your physical health will not be any better. So that's an important message to take home. But it's what you need to hear this because it's coming out of the media more and more every day. Now, I mentioned earlier about the issue of ferrets and mink. These were all in game farms. 
uh, and have, we've seen transmission there that have occurred. Um, and uh, they, it was independent of any humans. Once the humans infected these animals, it transmitted. Well, right. you take the uh, reusable bag first. The challenge there is not COVID. It's not SARS-CoV-2 contamination. It's about the fact that if you had a food item, such as a raw meat or chicken or whatever, and the juice is not going to eliminate that off your hands. But within several days, all the virus that could have potentially even gotten on it are gone, they're dead, they're over with, they're not gonna cause you any problems. So don't worry about your bags, except if they have obvious uh, contamination from juices of food items that very well could potentially carry salmonella campylobacter. In terms of the coming in all these items that then get used for you, uh, which I, I that, that, that possibility is just so remote. I think so, Mike, you dedicated this podcast to those inspired by Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And I understand she has some words of wisdom that you'd like to share as we close out this episode. She did as a jurist, uh, and, uh, not to offend anybody, but uh, she was the person who pleaded to those cases before and won them before the Supreme Court. Uh, especially on expanding the 14th Amendment. Uh, and she gave us a marvelous example of uh, how to reach across partisan divide. Uh, her friendship. Uh, you know, she, you know, judges when they go and, and go before their confirmation hearings, they all say their their personal feelings won't uh, affect how they go. It's really not true with Bader Ginsburg. She comes from a, a neighborhood and a culture I know very well, the Flatbush in Brooklyn, the Jewish immigrant culture there. And the two and moments that I think are most afraid about is one election night when we're sitting there and it looks like, Trump in the head and what that psychology does to the country. And then the crucial distinction that he makes, which is a governor. There's all sorts of men. Our system depends on the goodwill. And if that goodwill isn't there, then the spiral of accusation and animosity and enmity, I don't think we're going to see physical violence, but we'll see a level of psychological violence that we just haven't seen since 1865. Okay. After he won. There have been numerous studies done on the issue of voter fraud in our election in unique in American history because it was taking place during a pandemic and a public health crisis. As a result, states all over America are taking the appropriate steps to ensure more Americans can safely vote by mail in their own homes <clears throat> instead of risking their health or their lives to vote in person. The result is that this election will see by far the largest number of mail-in ballots ever. And let's be clear, despite what Donald Trump says, voting by mail is not a new or dangerous idea. Colorado, Hawaii, Oregon, Washington, Utah conduct their elections almost entirely by mail. California, Nevada, New Jersey, District of Columbia, my own state of Vermont, have pledged to mail ballots, and we as a people do, in the struggle to preserve American democracy. First, it is absolutely imperative that we have, by far, the largest voter turnout in American history, and that people vote as early as possible. As someone who is strongly supporting Joe Biden, let's be clear, a landslide victory for Biden will make it virtually impossible for Trump to deny the results, and is our best means for defending Second, with the pandemic and a massive increase in mail-in voting, state legislatures must take immediate action now, now, to allow mail-in votes to be counted before election day as they come in. In fact, 32 states allow for the counting or processing of absentee ballots, verifying signatures, for example, before election day. All states should do the same. The faster all ballots are counted, the less window there is for chaos and conspiracy theories. Third, the news media needs to prepare the American people to understand there is no longer a single election day and that it is very possible that we may not know the results on November 4th. Fourth, social media companies must finally get their act together and stop people from using their tools to spread disinformation and to threaten and harass election people. Fifth, in the Congress Fabulous, and I love her. So you may have seen her recently on the Titan Games with Veronica.
Mayo Clinic is in this perimenopausal, they're like, oh my gosh, there's something wrong with my hormone. Um, that's because of lack of estrogen in women. And then um, because we have estrogen receptors in our brain, sometimes it causes our brain to slow down. Because estrogen and testosterone is great for bone health. But once again, people who are meat eaters are eating tons of dietary protein. And then of course, because of nitrogen and fat, they have polyarchy. And remember, it's like biohacking. It's not, that, it's not that you need a medicine. It's not that you need it. There are some patients who just find it and don't need it. But there are studies. <laughs> Transition, that's another way. I mean, it's just like.